The following video is intended for general information only. It is not a substitute for legal advice and is not intended to cover all circumstances that might occur in a case before the General Sessions Court. This video discusses civil cases only. If you are charged in a criminal case, you should discuss the appointment of a lawyer with the judge. If you need advice on a civil case, contact a private attorney or your local legal aid office. Legal Aid of East Tennessee presents the Anytime Attorney, legal information on demand 24-7. This video discusses representing yourself in General Sessions Court, preparing for your day in court. General Sessions Court is where small disputes, those under $25,000, can be settled without a lawyer. But before you can take court action, you must first file a civil warrant. If you haven't done that yet, you should watch our video entitled representing yourself in General Sessions Court filing a lawsuit. You will find it in the Anytime Attorney online video library. So, you have filed your civil warrant and paid the filing fee, or the judge has agreed to postpone your fees. Next, each defendant you named must be served with a copy of the warrant. The warrant, with a date for the hearing, will usually be served on a defendant by a sheriff, deputy sheriff, or process server. You may want to call witnesses at your hearing. If someone knows the facts of your case because they saw them happen, his or her testimony may help your case. If you are very sure your witness will show up in court, you may only need to tell them the hearing date. However, if you are not sure if they will show up, or if you don't want your hearing to go on unless they are there to testify, you may want to have your witnesses subpoenaed. A subpoena tells someone to come to court on a certain day and testify. If they don't show up, they may be punished by the court. You can get witness subpoenas from the court clerk. You must pay a fee before a subpoena is issued. If you can't afford the fee, you may be able to avoid paying by filing an affidavit of indigency. If you have questions, ask the court clerk. It is important to know that the judge will not consider written statements or affidavits from witnesses. All witnesses must appear in court in person. Also know that the court may not notify you of your court date. You must call the court clerk. Keep in mind that sometimes hearings are postponed. Call the court clerk the day before your hearing to make sure your court date hasn't changed. Before your hearing, gather all papers supporting your side of the case. Decide who you will call as a witness and what you will ask them. Remember, if you don't understand what you want to say, neither will the judge. If you change your mind about continuing with this suit, you can dismiss it or end it without hurting your chance to bring it up again. Tell the judge that you want to dismiss the case without prejudice. However, you may only do this twice. After that, the court will decide you have lost the case and you cannot bring suit on that case again. In some Tennessee counties, the court will call the docket first thing. If you are not present when your case is called, you will lose. Be at court on time and do not leave the courtroom until your name is called. If you are present but defendant fails to appear, you can win a judgment. This will be taken by the judge to mean that the defendant admits he or she owes you the money or property in dispute. If both you and the defendant are present, the judge will set a day and time for your hearing or the judge may hear your case the same day. Because of that, you need to have all of your documents and witnesses with you every time you go to court. Keep in mind that not all Tennessee counties call the docket. Your first appearance may be your actual hearing. Many cases will be scheduled on the day of your hearing. Wait to hear your case called by the judge or court clerk. Arrive early because if your case is called and you're not there, your case may be dismissed. Once your case is called, you as a plaintiff will present your side first. Explain to the judge what property is being held or what money is owed to you and why. Be polite, but speak up. You have a right to speak for yourself in court. Call your witnesses and give the judge your papers showing your right to the property or money. Present your case and answer the judge's questions as best you can. The defendant then has a chance to explain his or her side of the dispute. You have a right to ask the defendant questions, and the defendant has a right to ask you questions. 
This is called cross-examination. Answer the questions fully. If the defendant doesn't show up, you will still have to present your side of the case. Either way, the judge will make a decision after hearing all the testimony. If you win, the judge will either say you can have your money or property back, or will give you a judgment for the value of the property. The defendant may agree to pay you or let you pick up your property. If the defendant doesn't agree, he or she has 10 days to appeal the ruling. If the case is about property that the defendant needs to give back to you and the defendant doesn't appeal within 10 days, you can go back to the court clerk and have a writ of possession issued by the court. In some counties, a sheriff's deputy or constable will pick up the property and return it to the court for you. In other counties, the deputy or constable will only serve the writ of possession. If you lose the case but want to try again, you have the automatic right to appeal. You must file an appeal within 10 days from the court ruling. If you appeal, the case will be heard again, usually in circuit court. In other words, the court will hold a new hearing and treat the case as if your first trial did not happen. To appeal in circuit court, you probably need a lawyer. Appealing a case in circuit court is more complicated and more expensive than filing a case in general sessions court. You will have to pay new fees and arrange for witnesses again. If you can't afford the filing fees, fill out an affidavit of indigency to ask that fees be postponed. If you win your suit, but the defendant no longer has your property, the court may award you a money judgment equal to the value of the property plus any court costs you have paid. Or you may have a judgment that says that the defendant owes you money, but you will have to try and collect. The court is not a collection agency and will not get the money for you. However, at the court clerk's office, you can fill out papers that will help you collect on the judgment. If you know where the defendant works, you may try to garnish his or her wages. Or you may be able to have some of the defendant's property seized and sold at an auction held by a deputy of the court. Money from the sale will then be paid to you to satisfy the judgment. To do this, get a levy form from the court clerk. Keep in mind that there will be filing fees for the garnishment and the levy. Remember, you may only represent yourself in General Sessions Court, and the court can only hear your case if the amount of money or value of property in dispute is less than $25,000. It is also important to keep in mind that if the other side has an attorney, it may be more difficult for you to successfully represent yourself. Remember, these have been general questions and answers about General Sessions Court. Each case is different with important issues to be considered. You should talk with an attorney about the specific details of your situation. If you can't afford a lawyer, call your local legal aid office. This video was produced by Legal Aid of East Tennessee. The information in this video is not a substitute for the advice of a lawyer. Also, laws may change and may be different from county to county and in states other than Tennessee.